The simulator itself is implemented with standard internet web technologies. There is a public viewer that can be accessed that has useful information about news reports that may or may not affect your business. It also shows the current simulation date. This viewer console is accessed with the same login account details as SAP. At the end of each simulation round, this viewer page is updated with financial and operational results of all the teams in that simulation. With this information, you can gauge how well you're doing in relation to the competition. In the SAP system, we have much more detailed information about our own company. You don't have to wait for the end of the round to run it. One of the key advantages of ERP systems such as SAP is that information is always live and up to date. At any point during the simulation, you can get a snapshot of your finances. Let's return to SAP and look at this report, as well as revisit the ones we already know about to see what story they tell us. Run the financial statement report. Its technical name is F.01. This report has one of the most detailed selection screens. Fortunately, we're not interested in most of these, only three of them. You must enter your company code, which is simply your team letter repeated twice. You must select SIM1 as the financial statement version. To control the output format of the report, you can choose from the set of list output options. Select the ALV tree control option and then execute the report. At some point, you will encounter a system warning or request for confirmation as we see here. To continue, click on the Confirm icon. This standard SAP report provides you with the balance sheet and the income statement of your company. If you have selected the ALV tree control display, you can see more details on each section of this report by expanding the folder. You can find your current bank account cash balance in the Current Assets section of the balance sheet. At the end of the report is the item you should be most interested in, your net income. This is your profit and the ultimate measure of whether or not you are managing your company well. The net income line corresponds to the cumulative profit or loss of your company since the beginning of the simulation. Starting from the second round, the report will show the financial results as they were at the end of the previous round. The different columns show changes for the current round, allowing you to get an idea of your current performance against previous rounds. Use the sales summary report to analyze your sales performance over the previous round. On which day did you make your last sale of each of your six products? Did that correspond to your recollection of when you ran out of inventory of these products? In addition to this summary sales report, there are also two other sales reports. The sales order report offers more detailed information about each sales order. Where the product was sold, meaning distribution channel and area, which product was sold, to whom it was sold, or the sold to party, the number of units sold, the sales revenue value, and the price at which the sale was made. You can also see information about when the customer will pay the invoice. In the distribution sim, all customers pay their invoice exactly 10 days after delivering. The price market report is the only place other than the simulation viewer where you can get information about your competition. Think of it as an industry report published for everyone. It is only published once every five simulated days, with a summary of sales activity for the industry as a whole over the previous five days. This will permit you to benchmark your decisions against the rest of the market as you will be able to see for each product the average sales price of orders placed, total units sold, and revenue value in each distribution channel. By this point, you are probably out of stock of most, if not all, of your products. We need to learn to replenish inventory. Before we see the transaction for this, we need to learn about our current resupply strategy and the delivery lead time of our supplier. We need to complete the procurement process based on our replenishment strategy. Our supplier takes up to three days to ship us what we have ordered. We can use the ERP system to calculate how much of each product is needed based on the existing replenishment and inventory levels. Procurement is a two-step process. First, you must generate the procurement plan. Once satisfied with the plan, you need to create purchase orders to be sent to your supplier to actually place the order. In round two, you will decide how often you send replenishment orders to your supplier. 
each time restocking the inventory levels you started with. You will continue to adjust your sales price and marketing spending as you did in round one. Look at your job aid. The procurement transactions can all be found in the center in the area marked procurement process. Let's turn to the SAP system to learn how to run the relevant reports and operational transactions. The MRP calculation process uses the independent requirements or replenishment level and the current stock levels to calculate how much of each product needs to be ordered from your supplier. If, for example, your replenishment level is set at 1,000 boxes of 1 liter clear pure and there are 400 boxes in stock, the MRP will generate a requisition to purchase 600 boxes of 1 liter clear pure. Run the MRP transaction. Its technical name is MD01. The behavior of the MRP can be controlled with a variety of parameters. For our purposes, we must set these to those that we need. Set the parameters as follows. Plant, your plant. The processing key, N-E-U-P-L. Create purchase requisition, one. Schedule lines, three. Create MRP list, one. Planning mode, three. Display material list. Check the box if it's not already checked. Once you've filled in all these details, you will need to click on Enter to begin the MRP process. A warning notice is displayed at the bottom of the page, advising you to check your parameters before confirming. Click on Enter again to proceed. Confirm that you want to start the planning run. After SAP completes the planning process, you will see information on what planning items have been created. The MRP process creates requisitions which are internal documents. To place orders with your vendor, you need to create and send them purchase orders. SAP provides a simple way to accept all purchase requisitions and aggregate them to create new purchase orders. The transaction ME59N automatically creates consolidated purchase orders for each vendor. The default selection parameters for this report are all that are needed. Simply click on the Execute icon to have SAP perform the conversion process. You will see a summary of the purchase orders created. At some point during the simulation, you are bound to see a No Suitable Requisition Found at the bottom level of your screen. The system is telling you that there were no new requisitions that needed to be processed. To see this message, execute the procedure again. Since you just created all the purchase orders you needed and have not rerun the MRP, there are no new requisitions that must be processed. If you encounter this message, either you have already run the process, forgotten to run the MRP, or the MRP has not generated any requisitions. This might be the case if you have sufficient inventory and purchase orders in the system already when you ran the MRP. Retrace your steps and ensure you have run all the transactions properly and in the correct sequence. There is a purchase order tracking report that we can use to see what purchase orders we have in the system and track their status. The purchase order tracking report shows the list of all the purchase orders in the system. It shows the quantity of each material ordered and the price you pay. The last columns are the most useful. The delivery or completion status informs you if the materials have been delivered to your warehouse or not. The goods column informs you on which simulation day the goods were delivered or will be delivered. The payment column informs you when you must pay for them.